For over 40 years, the HIV and AIDS epidemic has been one of the world's most serious public health crises. While significant progress has been made in the treatment and prevention of HIV, there are still many challenges to overcome. One of them is the growing number of HIV patients over 50 years old. The life expectancy of people living with HIV has increased significantly as antiretroviral therapy has become more widely available. A diagnosis of HIV today is vastly different from what it was three decades ago. Life expectancy for those with HIV approaches that of those without. This is certainly a cause for celebration. But as with any celebration, there's always a sobering morning after. The number of HIV positive individuals over 50 has increased. Currently, over half of adults living with HIV are over the age of 50, and by 2030, over 70% of HIV population in the US alone will be over 50. Hence, HIV care and research now face new challenges. The reality of HIV and aging involves grappling with comorbidities health conditions that co-occur and they're showing up at a faster rate compared to HIV negative counterparts. Diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, bone and joint issues. These are all significantly higher amongst our aging HIV positive population. Older people living with HIV also have an increased risk of dementia, frailty, and some cancers. They also may be more likely to fall. It's also common for older adults with HIV to experience mental illness, especially depression and addiction, and they tend to be more isolated. Now, why is this happening, you might think? Well, there are several theories. Some believe that it's the virus itself. Some believe that it's the chronic inflammation and immune activation, which is common among people living with HIV, accelerating the aging process. Others suggest that it's the side effects of long-term antiretroviral therapy that may play a role. There's also a possibility that lifestyle factors common among people living with HIV, such as higher rates of smoking, drug use, contribute towards these comorbidities. In reality, it's probably a complex interplay of all of these factors. So, what can be done? How do we ensure that aging with HIV doesn't mean just surviving, but thriving? It begins with recognizing the problem, which is exactly what we're doing in this episode. It continues with more research to understand the mechanism behind these early comorbidities, which can lead to better therapies. It is crucial to provide more funding for clinical research on HIV and aging because of the potential impact on public health that this research may have. Health disparities and poor outcomes may increase without new research to guide treatment and care for this population. This could result in an increase in healthcare costs and decrease in quality of life for those affected. As mentioned earlier, there is evidence that HIV patients age faster. Age-relating health issues include heart disease, cancer, and cognitive decline due to advanced aging. Additional research is required to better understand the mechanisms behind accelerating aging in HIV-positive individuals and to develop interventions to slow down or reverse this process. New clinical research on HIV and aging is necessary because it addresses the population's unique challenges. For example, HIV-positive individuals are more likely to develop coexisting diseases such as diabetes and hypertension that complicate HIV treatment. HIV patients also face social and economic challenges, including stigma, discrimination, and poverty. In addition to addressing these challenges, new research can contribute to the identification of interventions that can improve the health and well-being of this population. 
It is also essential to understand the interactions between HIV and other medication commonly used by older adults. For instance, certain HIV medication may interact with medication used to treat other conditions such as heart disease or diabetes. New research is required to understand these interactions and develop treatment strategies that minimize adverse drug effects. Finally, new research on HIV and aging is crucial to improving our understanding of the biology of aging itself. Understanding the mechanisms behind aging in HIV-infected individuals may allow us to develop new interventions beneficial not only to this population, but also to the general population. The aging process can be studied through HIV lens, providing an unprecedented opportunity for ongoing research to advance our understanding on aging and age-related diseases. Yes, the journey isn't easy, but remember how far we've come. We turned HIV from a death sentence into a manageable chronic condition. WHO had a global target for people living with HIV that by 2020, 90% of all people living with HIV will know their HIV status. Of that, 90% of all people with diagnosed HIV infection will receive sustained antiretroviral therapy. And 90% of all people receiving antiretroviral therapy will have viral suppression. Many countries within Europe and UK were able to meet this target, and other countries are working to get there. But as we reach this milestone, it's time to turn our attention to the often overlooked fourth 90, which is improving quality of life of people living with HIV. This includes reducing the comorbidities associated with aging and HIV. Therefore, Advancing clinical research on HIV and aging is imperative to address the growing challenges faced by this community. Now, as we delve deeper into the intricate world of HIV, we continue to unearth challenges and victories alike. The journey has been long and there is yet much ground to cover. With today's episode, we've wrapped up our comprehensive four-part series on the HIV overview. From understanding the tumultuous beginning of the epidemic, traversing through the rough terrains of breakthrough and setbacks, to celebrate the powerful message, you equals you. And today, exploring the aging paradigm, we've journeyed through the complex landscape of HIV. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Please like and share this video and subscribe to our channel. Together, let's build a world where sex education is a human right.